Okay, let's just go ahead really quick. I'm Lucy, and this and is Lynn. Lynn, yeah. Chris, Sarah, Jen, Bridget, Tracy, Jack, Rachel, Elizabeth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I have been teaching for about six years, and uh, um, recently I discovered my favorite style is in, <laughs> and also the the balls. So let's start it with the so the structure of the class. I'm going to talk about the beginning of the class. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can oh, get into it. Just one pinnacle and two single ball. Yeah, so. Uh, of sit on top of the block first, and uh, I always like my students sit on top of the block, so this will help them to tilt their pelvis forward. Um, the lower back can be straight, and uh, any position you feel comfortable. So one way to start the class just ask them to grab one ball, and you're going to find ask your students to find their sternum, and uh, underneath their sternum there's a dent. So you just use the ball to massage out this area. And uh, also three principles on this class. First, you will feel, never feel sharp and shooting pain. This is on every in class if you never teach it before. And uh, also, mm, but you will feel pain on this class. But this is like a <laughs> tenderness. <laughs> Soreness, and uh, you know your body knows it's like a hurt so good kind of pain, mm -hmm. and uh, and also during the class you will have hiccups and you will fart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you say that when you're in the class? Yes, every class. Yes, because it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Later in the class we're using the balls to um, unblock our meridian lines. That's mm -hmm. that's why. So the perspective I learned from is from Chinese medicine perspective. So there's another way learning this is uh, like myofascia, like muscle level, okay? Then from here, you can also roll it up and down. A lot of us, uh, you, when you roll it, you will feel the pain, a lot of us, because uh, especially for female, we stuck a lot of chi, so it's prana in yoga in this area for females. Then uh, we are going to come to the right side of the pecs, so you're just going to roll it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of you feel extremely painful, especially you do a lot of vinyasa style class. All those chaturangas. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So my body is very sensitive. So when I do this, I immediately have um upper, I will immediately burn. Yeah. Chris likes to say, look for the ooh, not the ouch. I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. like this yeah. is kind of an ooh, yeah. 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 We yeah. love yeah. the good pain. Ooh. And also, you guys, them like uh, if you uh, any like a pain you feel, and you can stay a little bit longer time there and then you're going to switch side on the other. So basically this is just to help them to open up their chest area. So afterwards you will notice, um, even not we're not doing much, you will notice uh, your, your breath, you can breathe a little deeper and you can sit up tall after this. And your mood changes too, if you are sensitive. And then you can also you grab two balls and just hit around your collarbone area. So this is basically mimic the motion of a um, gorilla. Yeah, because when they are angry, they want to get the emotion out. That's what they do. Okay. Yeah. This feels really nice and release <laughs> and release all your stress and emotion. Uh, yeah. Especially if you feel like the day you feel very low, and this will help you to bring your energy up. Now this is one way to open up the class, okay? And uh, normally I would do a little bit of grounding, breathe, breath work at the beginning, okay? And just to notice how you feel afterwards. You just feel this side, is this area is open, right? We didn't do much. And uh, this is one way to open the uh, class. The other way to open the class is I'm going to ask uh, everybody to stand up. So I start with bottom of their feet. And uh, just one more. Let's all do right foot. And you're going to start, so we have three arches, a inner closer towards your big toe side and middle part and close towards your pinky side. Basically how you roll on the ball is you decide how much pressure you want to put on and you just start to slowly roll it 
forward and back. So the slower your movement is, the more benefit you're going to get. Any painful spot, you're going to stay there a little bit longer. This is really good for people who have black foot. This will help them to rebuild up their arch. And also for pain fasciitis. This is if you roll it every day. And one of my students told me he is rolling it every day and it's gone. Oh, nice. Just rolling this, yeah. Now, middle of your foot, and you will notice how painful it is. <laughs> it's actually never down before. Okay. And then you go to the pinky side of your foot. And uh, in the bottom of our foot, there are uh, several pressure points. The first one is if you crunch at your toes and this stand right here, you can press on. Okay. So just to press onto the ball and you will feel it. So this is a pressure point on your kidney meridian line. I'm not going to go to details of it because it will take hours and hours <laughs> to talk about meridian lines. And you can press down and you can also like uh, start to add some twisting motion. This is the first spot they can work on. And the second uh, pressure point is right here on your in, in the middle of your inner arch. This generally speaking, a lot of people press down will feel it. And you decide how much weight you want to put on. And again, you can stay still. You can also add some twisting motion there. Okay. And uh, the third point is right in front of your heel, like uh, come into your foot right here. Mm. Yeah. This one, you actually can lower the ball part of your foot down. And sometimes uh, this pressure point, you worked, then you can move to their heel and ask them to work on their heel just to see if there's any painful spot. And here you can do the balance. Uh, some of them, they're able to just the balance like this, come into a tree pose. But only a few people can do this on the class. Okay. And also a lot of pressure on the ball. <laughs> then we're going to massage out our transverse arch. So basically it's here around the ball part of your foot. You're just going to go in left and right. And also I'm video shooting this, I'm going to upload it to my YouTube channel so you guys can access to it, yeah. Then we're going to come down or here you want to spread your toes as wide as you can. Like you try to use your toe to lift the ball up away from the mat. So I'm going to, normally I start with press down with the big toe and second toe first. Then you walk onto your second and middle toe. And we walk to the third and fourth toe press down more. Then your fourth toe and your pinky try to press down more. And you will feel each one, especially the pinky and fourth toe because it's so far away from our brain. And sometimes you will notice you ask them to do things, they just don't do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's why you also need practice there. And then uh, just to lower your feet down, just to feel the difference. And you will feel the foot we worked on is more grounding and it's like evenly distributes your weight on the, uh, on the mat. And normally after this, I will ask the students, you're going to inhale, reach your arm up. Exhale, you're going to bend your knees and forward fold. You will notice the foot we worked out that like it's straighter than mm -hmm. the other. And forward fold, one side is way more easier than the other side. So a lot of times after you worked on it and you ask them to feel the difference, they will feel in a while, you know. That's, we didn't do much, but that's a lot. So this is one way to massage out the bottom of your feet. So if you have knee issues, you will work on the other foot, okay? The other way, I'm just going to uh, show you guys, uh, the other way is more advanced version. So you need two balls. You put it on the bottom of your heel, and uh, <coughs> you probably need blocks in front of you. So from here, uh, be mindful of students have knee issues, they're not able to squat down, okay? Mm -hmm. If you have knee problems, don't do that. You just don't do the same thing on the other foot, okay? And then if your knee is okay, you're gonna bend your knee, slowly start to squat down, and you can put your hands on the block. So right now, balls are underneath your heels. Now from here, only if you are okay, this is going to be extremely painful, especially if you've never done this before, and you're going to lift your ball part of your foot up. You're just going to roll the ball on the bottom of your foot. 
for a lot of us, this is very ooh, this is a lot. <laughs> Some, a lot of us, if you're not able to, and a lot of balance involved, if you're not able to like lift the front of your foot up, that's completely okay. You just decide how much weight you want to put on. So eventually you're going to be able to just throw it. This is, this was, this is more advanced version. This is more painful and more pressure in, on it. Okay. I can definitely feel the difference in my feet between the one that we did and the one that we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now from here, you remove your balls. I'm, I'm not able to do both sides evenly today, just to, I want to show you guys everything. So normally after we release bottom of our foot, the in posture toe squat will feel much easier after you release the fascia on the bottom of your foot. I'll ask them to stay here. And you can add shoulder opening, grab opposite side of the elbow. You can also do reverse prayer while you are holding this uh, posture if you want to add shoulder opening. Then the counterbalance pose will be uh, ankle stretch. You just point in your toes and sit back. So they are uh, balanced. So in, in a class, when we uh, structure our class, you always uh, st stretch your body one direction, then counterbalance pose to bring it back. Then, um, to show you guys, um, so two ways to open cast. Normally that's how I do to open the cast. Then if you work the on bottom of your foot, uh, when you structure the big trunk in the middle of the cast, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, you think about your body, right? You can start with bottom <laughs> and your back all the way up. You can think about this. This can be the whole cast in our for this. And you can also do uh, from, like if you want to release your front, you can even do the front of your foot all the way up. If you want to sequence around the legs, our legs have one, two, three, four, four directions. You can use the balls to work on all your legs and uh, do couple spot on the upper body. So always do uh, not just the lower body for the entire class and afterwards they will not feel good. So always end the class with um, a lower body and upper body. But you can put like a more emphasis on lower body in one class and a more emphasis on upper body in one class. Uh, but generally speaking, if you did uh, one class, if you did all shoulders, upper body, afterwards I think they feel okay. But if one class you only did legs, you never done anything about upper body, and afterwards they leave, they uh, it will not feel very good. So, um, we just go to one more time. You always end class with just mm -hmm. make sure you have upper body. Just mm -hmm. make sure you have upper body. Some yeah. amount of upper body. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, even just the one, they will immediately okay. feel the difference. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to show you guys one uh, like a sequence you can do. Right. We just uh, release our bottom of our foot. Now you can. Uh, this is our back fascia line. Bottom of your foot, uh, all the way up to your back. We're going to do it this way. So. First one is going to do loose up your calves and your hamstring. This one is extended child pose. So you're going to put two balls on the back of your knee here. And you need your blocks in front of you. Yeah, so from here, big toes to touch, knees wide. You start to slowly sit back. And you decide how much you can handle, okay? This is really very painful, especially your first time doing it, <laughs> I know. And is it, is it right up against the back of the knee? Yes, yes. Oh man. Should we feel this more in the calves or in the hamstring? More in the calves. Right. Generally speaking, it's more in the calves, but you're getting hamstring at the same time too. This what is, is more painful, painful than my feet. Yes. Yeah. 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 And you ask them hold a couple breaths in one spot, and basically on the back of your calves, you can slowly just roll back, roll down a couple inches and slowly sit back again. So the easier version, basically you think about your body weight, right? And so the more you lean your body weight forward, less weight on the ball and it's less tension. But if you think about, oh, you want to sit your upper body up, this will put more pressure on the ball. And not everybody can do that. This is how you, um, and keep breathing and remind your student if you hear their breath, their breath is very shallow, that means because a lot, especially men, they want to take a lot of pain. But if you notice, you need to remind them, you know, if you're not able to maintain a smooth breath, that means it's too much. 
and uh, then move down a little more because these are a lot of areas where we're working on you're not able to get it at the normal yoga class no. yeah Then you just guide them slowly, move down a couple inches, couple inches. So normally when it's closer towards your ankle and a lot of us will be able to sit up tall. And but be mindful of uh, your student's knee. If they have knee issues, this is a lot for their, yeah, if the specialists have tight quad and you need to guide them. There's more knee pads in the back. Restorative yeah. classes, if you guys ever need them. Yeah, I normally would uh, like uh, in class, I would normally would put a blanket underneath your knee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long would you um, be doing this pose? I would like uh, you each spot, you probably just stay uh, about five breaths. Yeah. Okay. And slowly, depends on how uh, many sections you want to separate for your calves. Uh, if you want to do it thoroughly, you can slowly move it a little bit, a little bit. But generally speaking, I just do three point one but behind the back of your knee, right in the middle of the calf, the median spot, then the and uh, the Achilles tendon. Mm -hmm. Then you can roll. We can all roll down to the Achilles tendon. Normally, here you can come up, and this is our hero pose, right? That you have the ball and then knees your. Normally, if this is really good for those people, if you're in yogi squat, they are not able to lower their heel down. And not, this is because their Achilles tendons are very tight, and uh, this will help to release it. Okay. Yes. Then you're going to remove it. And normally, each muscle I work down, I would ask them just to massage it out afterwards. And for the calves, there's, uh, this is one way to do it, more accessible to a lot of students. There's also another way to do it. Um, this one, you need two blocks. You want to sit on the block and keep your knees bent. Basically, you will pose on top of the block. This one, you just need one ball. Because among the evening class, I don't have enough balls for everybody. Everybody can only get one ball. But this is how I walk around it. So you're going to, um, yeah, right, uh, let's, yeah, right foot, step forward, and you're going to shift your body way forward, slide the ball just behind your left knee here. And you're going to slowly sit back. This is more intense. Yeah, some of you, if you're not able to sit back, make your top block a little bit higher, yeah, and try to sit back. Medium setting, and sit back. Yeah, I have a question. The muscles that are being compressed right now, should I be relaxing? Them? Relaxing, yes. We're not resisting mm -hmm. what I feel. You're trying to relax, yes. The more you relax, the more benefits you can get. So the more advanced option, of course, you're going to remove one block out and just to sit along one block. Ooh, ah, this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll stay here. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> that changes it. Yeah. Woo! A lot. <laughs> And also extend this leg forward, we'll add more tension, shift more body weight toward this side of your glutes, add more tension too, yeah. Okay, so this is one way to do it, you just have one ball, and also uh, the other more advanced way to do it is like uh, you put two balls, you do both legs, this will be more intense. Mm. Is it normal to feel, I feel like, like pulsing, pulsating a little bit? Well, you've got a big artery going through. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now from here, same principle, you just slowly move back, slowly move back, and slowly sit back. The lower your block is, and the um, more t tension you will feel. Okay. So then you're going to come down. Um, let me just show you guys how you do that. Unfortunately, we don't have time to do every spot. <laughs> how many you guys wish to? So now, uh, we keep moving up. So back of your knee, you can press, but not too long, I would say. So this one, you need two blocks. Because there's a lot of nerve bundles there. And the uh, lower setting. So do two balls right in the middle of back of your knee here. 
and you can put your hands behind you and uh, you can lift your legs up just to massage it out basically in the middle of your knee this pressure point is linked to your lower back this release your lower back pain tension right in the middle of back of the knee especially people's there are a lot of uh, people's hamstring are too bit tight every time they stretch their hamstring they feel a lot of tension on the back of the knee so this is a good way to release that and from here you can also ask them to lean forward and basically you know, forward fold motion and then if they want more they can try to lift their legs away from the mat this adds more intention because you add more weight into the wall okay. uh, you relax your legs okay. and slowly run up and just to remove the ball massage out the back of your knee here okay and normally after each uh, area press you you will like, I like your, ask your students to compare basically we're losing our back fascia line and they will notice uh, every time they come into forward fold and they will gain a lot more space there okay and I did have like a couple class a student told me they were never able to get their toes in forward fold but they were they were able to after the balls then we continue to move up glutes very painful <laughs> so easiest way to do it you lie down just the two balls you're going to start with um, on the top outside of your sitting bone here okay so you lie down on your back and keep your knees bent and you basically just move your hip left and right a little yes and also our ball never touch our bone Then after this area released, you can ask them to move the ball in the middle of the butt cheek. Same movement. You can move it left and right. You can also draw circles. And there's another way to do the movement is you bring soles of the feet together, open your knees out wide like a brick line butterfly pose and from here you're going to inhale bring your knees up towards the ceiling and exhale you slowly open your knees out wide this adds sheer motion on the ball so the slower your movements is the more you will feel how would you do this with just one ball you would just switch sides i have another way to do it okay. yeah <laughs> i'm going to show you guys next so put your hands on the outside of a knee bring your knee up if if sometimes you can also guide them just to stay in recline butterfly pose for a while for a couple of breaths then if you do that you need to do counterbalance pose separate your feet uh, mad distance apart bring your knees closer towards each other let them stay there for a couple of breaths then from here uh, we all going to uh, remove your ball out first yeah and uh, we're going to slowly push yourself up Yeah, one ball. How do you do it with one ball? So one ball you're going to do is seated. Put one ball underneath your left side of your glutes. So bend your knees, separate your feet, hips distance apart. Your fingertips are pointing backwards. So this way, when you press down, lift your chest up. You're also stretching your pecs while you're doing this. Now from here, just to push into your foot and just to. So when you do one ball, you want to roll your body with 45 degree angle towards this side of the glutes. Yeah, actually one ball is more intense compared to when you lie down. Mm. And you just start to move forward and back and draw circles. Okay. And uh, to intensify it is going to whatever side you have your ball, you're going to put this ankle on top of the opposite side of the knee in figure four position. You also add hip opening here. Is that more intense to the ball? And uh, you start to draw circles again. <laughs> I know, especially for you guys, never, you know, take uh, in stretch class, always vinyasa power. Oh, yeah, this is, this, this is really painful for you guys. 
Now, uh, at the end, if you want to hold still, you can just ask them to relax their glutes down. And I normally would ask them to, uh, everybody relax your glutes down. So move your ball a little bit out to the outside of your glutes. Then you still lean your body weight this way. So this way your hips is relaxed down. And uh, we, if you want to stay stillness, you can add sh uh, shoulder stretch. So you work your palms back as much as you can. But if you don't want to round your spine, you push into your heel, lift your chest up, feel the stretch at the front of your shoulders, your pecs. Then this is one option to do it. But a lot of people, when they're doing this, they hypertension their elbow. So this is not good. So you can also guide them to lower their forearm down. This will add more pressure to the ball too, but this way no less pressure on the elbow. Then hug your elbow in towards the center line and keep your chest lifted. Okay, you can find stillness and let them stay here. This is uh, another way to do it with one ball. Then you can relax this side of the foot down and slowly push yourself up and just a massage out here first. So the arm side of your glutes, two ways already, and there's another way to do it. Uh, this will target more outside. So glute is medius. A uh, reason to have noted this is a really, uh, actually a good way to end the class while you're doing this. So find your hip bone at the front. You want to trace it all the way to the side, okay? Then you're going to place your ball right underneath here. You're going to lie down sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your knees bent. <laughs> okay, so if you're able to, you can lie all the way down on your side. So we are tracing our hip bone, Elizabeth. We trace our hip bone all the way to the side. Then you're going to put your ball right in the side. Okay? So from here, you can, if you can lie down all the way on your side and keep your, uh, whatever side it is, bottom arm forward. So from here, you can add a twist, okay? You just open your top arm out and while they are holding the ball and they can add twist. Uh, I use this to end the class now, sometimes. Then you're going to slowly bring your arm together. Yeah. And you can slowly push yourself up. Then you use a fist and you massage it out. So, are you guys okay? So normally after this, yeah, after you uh, release your glutes, it feels really good. And uh, I do pigeon pose because you lose up the muscle for that. Mm -hmm. This feels really good. You can do pigeon pose after this and they have that muscle, uh, no, mind-body connection. They know we press on the muscle, they feel it, and know, they know which muscle we are stretching on. You can do pigeon. You can also do double pigeon. So any kind of posture. And uh, also if you do one side, you can also let them uh, do like a, mm, the other side, they will feel the difference. If you guys do pigeon on the other side, we didn't work on the ball, and you will feel the difference. Uh, one side is way tighter than the other. Okay, so this is good. Then we keep moving up. Moving up, we are going to come into our lower back. This one, we need a peanut ball. This is easier. Uh, so, yeah, one way to do it is peanut ball. So the peanut ball, you are going to find it right behind your belly button. Uh, ball never touch your bone, right? So basically, you're going to put it, the ball will hit outside of your spine. The peanut ball naturally avoid your spine here. So this is one, a peanut ball? Peanut ball. Peanut yeah. ball. Yeah. <laughs> then you're going to slowly lie down. How many do we have? How many peanut balls do we have? Right now I have 12. 12. Yeah, but I think I probably will get more balls after my trip. Oh, if you can find any oh, other supply. Yeah, that's that's cool. Cool. yeah. Now from here, um, 
a lot of people with a lower back issues, they will immediately feel a lot. And uh, if you want to add more, you just bend your right knee in, interlace your fingers on top of your right shin, and this will immediately add more pressure on one side. Uh, from here, you can ask them to draw some circles with the ankles, one direction and the other. And you can also ask them to put their hand on their knee, just to draw some circles with the knee and this uh, add shear motion. And then you lower this foot down, you guide them to switch the other direction, the other side. Yeah. And uh, ultimately both knee in. Not everybody can do this, listen to your body, okay? And from here, you can also extend your legs long towards the ceiling. This is our waterfall pose. You can ask them to hold. So our butts are lifted. Mm. Or should the peanut ball be farther up the spine so our butts are on the earth? Wow. Mm. I but guess it depends lifted. on the size of your butt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But don't let them hold for too long. And bend your knees and uh, slowly lower your foot down. Okay. And you're going to push into your foot and lift your hip up and just to remove your ball out to the side. <laughs> Afterwards, ask them to bend their knee in and just put their hands on the knee, draw some circles with your knee, rock side and side with a sacrum. This really relieves any tension they might have with the, with the ball. And if you draw a circle with your knee one direction, you need to change direction. And then uh, in class, normally ask them to lie down sideways and push themselves up. But you can roll up if you want. And just notice how your lower back feel. Then you're gonna rub your palms really quick to create some heat. The area we just worked on, just ask them to use their palms to massage it up and down a little. And it's basically just to make them feel better afterwards. And this is one way to do the lower back. The other way to do the lower back is also pin the ball. You just put it uh, around your lower back, along your spine. You put your forearm down, you push into your heel. Basically, you can roll the ball up and down just around your lower back area. You actually can roll it a little bit higher even closer towards your mid back this way. Ask him to, ask him to relax here head and neck here. This this actually I feel like I'm working on my abs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other way to do this is uh, two single balls. Two single balls basically this you can massage the area is very big. So you find your lower rib cage, then you find your sacrum right. So this very big area, this is your QL. So this whole area, as long as you're not touching the bone, and you can use the ball to massage it out. This one, you can also ask them to lie down on their back and knee bend. You basically lift your, lift your hip up and roll it. You can roll it left and right. You can also draw circles with your... And where does that go? Is that below your kidneys? That's just below, right? Okay, it's not your below your... It's, it's below your lowest rib cage. Okay. Right. Yeah. And also outside of your spine. This is a very big area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You want them to find the tender spot. So, so, so in Chinese medicine, if there is a blockage in meridian line, you will feel the tension. If everything is so smooth and no problem, and uh, you will not feel any pain in that area. So this is a couple ways to do lower back. Okay. Basically, you can be creative. You can do any movement to feel good for your body. Yeah, you feel free to explore it. And uh, whenever you're ready, you're going to sit up. We're going to keep moving up. So the next one is our shoulder blades, right? Our back line, we keep moving up. Uh, when we come up our shoulders, this feels really good. So pin the ball behind your shoulder blades. 
Okay. This one you're also going to do it like that. Some of you, if if some of the students they lie down, their chin look like this, ask them to put a block or blanket under their head. Otherwise, this is not very good for their neck. So make sure you have a block closer towards you and slowly lie back. So you want the ball hit uh, right in between your shoulder blades here. Keep your knees bent it will be a little bit easier for your lower back. Depends on which way you feel better. If you need a block underneath your head, feel free to do so. Okay, so your uh, hips are relaxed. Just open your arms out wide. Just to let your body ease into the pressure first. Yeah. Uh, a lot of time for the first timer, this is already extremely painful for them, especially if they have shoulder and neck issues. Uh, and this, uh, the movement will be, you are going to inhale, ex slowly extend your arms long above your head. And exhale, slowly lower your arms down next to your hips. So the slower your movements are. Up, yeah. Slowly. So you're going to do up and down. So you just inhale, reach up, straight up. And exhale, slowly. You can also draw circles with your arms. Yeah. And just to feel it. Big circle. Then you can also open your arms out wide, then give yourself a big hug, grab opposite side of your shoulder. So the more you move your fingertips closer towards your shoulder blades behind you, the more you're going to feel on the ball because you're extending this muscle. And just gently rock it side to side. These areas are related to your heart and lungs. After you press on here, you sit up, you will feel uh, your breath can go a lot more deeper and longer. And uh, from here, you can also draw circles with your shoulders as you hold your, so you keep hugging your uh, opposite side of your shoulder, you just draw circles with your shoulder from here. You can guide them to open their arms out wide and close. Uh, give them a self hug and opposite side arm on top and this will change the pressure too and do a couple times and the two uh, more pressure you can also bend your elbows just bend, bend your elbows open your elbow out wide and you can start to draw circles with your elbow here yeah you will feel this it's like those muscles massage into the wall it feels like a screwdriver motion Switch direction. Normally, I find our students really like when we release upper body. Okay. Then, everybody bend your knees. You're going to interlace your fingers. Still lie down on your back. You're going to interlace your fingers behind your head. You're going to take a deep inhale. Exhale like you're doing a sit up and uh, bend your elbows. Gaze at your belly. Sit up. So bend your knees. <laughs> and inhale, you're going to lower down. And exhale, you're going to lift it up. Ask them to do this a couple of times. Then we're going to keep our upper body lifted. And you're going to push into your foot. You start to roll your upper body on the ball. This is very painful too. If you're not able to move, that's okay, okay? So basically, same thing like you massage out your lower back, you can use the ball to uh, massage and roll your upper back too. And if it's too much for you to uh, move, you can just find a new painful spot and start to lie back down again. <laughs> Hello. And you sit up, you will feel a lot of release on your neck and your shoulders. It feels good. So remember how you feel and uh, you know how your students feel. I, I try to do this at least at once a week by myself. If you people fall asleep during Shavasana? Yeah, a lot. Especially <laughs> when I play standing balls. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so we continue to move up. Next one, I would say that's what the people like the most is your upper traps. Okay, so you just I normally before I get started, ask them to use opposite side of the fingertips, just feel the upper trap and uh, and feel the tenderness and uh, wherever you feel this is where you will put the ball. And this one also need a block. Uh, so. The shoulder blades after you did that, sometimes you can do a eagle pose, plus this whatever we worked on, you stretch it out, and this feels good afterwards. And also they have that muscle body, uh, mind body connection, okay? And uh, upper trap. Make sure there's a block handy. And uh, this one you also need to lie down on your back, just the one ball on each side. You're going to slide it underneath your upper trap. And uh, one block, supported bridge pose, lower setting, less tension. Also, I recommend a majority of my students doing lower setting. Uh, only if you know you're very flexible, then medium setting. I would not recommend high setting on this one, just because for the lower back, a lot of back bending. And also, the higher your block are, the more pressure on the ball. You said one single ball at a time. Uh, two balls, just one, yeah, one on each side. Gotcha. Yeah. Two balls, yeah. And you find a sweet spot and stay there. Still, normally when we first come into, we want to find stillness and they can feel the pressure, that their body ease into the pressure. Then we start to add movement. This is, uh, so single point of pressure right now and when we add movement, that's sheer motion. Um, similar like what we did with shoulder blades, uh, you can extend your arms above your head, slowly lower your palm back, yeah. and you exhale slowly lower down. Again, inhale. And exhale. Okay. And you can also draw circle with your shoulder. You can also choose to grab opposite side of your, uh, give yourself a big hug. So same, similar motion, like I think exactly the same, like we just did with our shoulder blades. And these actually feel so good because nowadays, you know, our upper trap is constantly contract for a lot of us. This one actually you can rock it side to side if one side of the upper trap feel a lot you can shift all your body weight on that side and just uh, you can start to draw circles. This one you can also bend your elbows and draw circles with your elbows like you did with shoulder blades just to see how you feel. You can be creative with your arm movement. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get out. <laughs> now, get out. Uh, I would like uh, um, remove your ball out first. Uh, sometimes you can ask them still, still, right? This is a supported bridge pose. You can also guide them to bring also of your feet together, open their knees out wide if they want to add hip opening here. So when you want to come out, you just uh, bring your knees together and remove your block out to the side and move each ball out to the side and find a seated position. You can massage it out, just notice how you feel. Because all these areas release your, uh, this area, you, every time you come back, you notice you will be able to sit up more taller. That's the one I need the most. <laughs> okay, so uh, then your back line, right? We keep coming up, we're going to come to our, uh, all, what is it called? So the 
the base of your hairline, where the two dead. Acceptable. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> These are also a pressure point here. Relief headaches. Okay. This one you need a peanut ball, one block. And normally this is at the end of the class because afterwards you are sleeping. You don't want to get up. <laughs> <laughs> so this is. I just want to show you the whole way to sequence the class. This is release our back line. So the uh, you're going to also lie down your back and bend your knees, and you use your hand grab your ball just to put your ball. Uh, on those um, two dents on the base of your hairline. From here, you just do yes and no motion with your head. And you can do this, close your eyes. This is very relaxing because afterwards, you come directly into Shavasana. Normally, I end class with this one. And this one, also, if I notice, uh, like, uh, your students, if they have hair tie, recommend them to remove it so they can completely relax. And also, if you have glasses, you can remove it and do it with your eyes closed. Just tell them to put their glasses really close to their body so that you don't accidentally step on them with mm -hmm. glasses. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you just move your chin up and down, yes motion, and left and right, no motion with your head. If you move your head one direction, you feel more pressure on one side, uh, you can stay there. And also you can tilt your head uh, one way, then gently move your chin up and down to release it. So this is for releasing headaches. If you have headaches, just lie down on the ball for five minutes. This will help relieve the headaches. Okay. And it's also very good for your eyesight too. And also for uh, those of you, if you teach a, a flow-based class, right, you don't have uh, the ball, you can also do this, uh, just massage this area with the help of the blocks. If you guys want to know it, I can show you guys. Just the two blocks, you stack, you stack it like this. So the edge closer towards you is where when it hits the ball, it's going to hit. Okay. You still lie down on the back. And this, sometimes with the class, I like to end it like this. And they can also stay here, you know. Basically, this is very relaxing and soothing. Friday night. Friday night. It's Friday night. happening next Friday night. Fire your lid is going to end more like this. Okay, so basically I just give you one sequence you when you work on your back line and uh, then uh, I'm gonna come up. Then the other way to sequence another class, I'm gonna show you guys work on our legs, then upper body, then more to upper body. And uh, legs uh four side right and uh top of your feet you can massage it out too just to use one ball use your hand you just roll it there's a dent in between your big toe and your second toe here and this is a pressure point if you use your thumb to press on and uh, a lot of us it's pretty painful here <laughs> This is related to your liver. Okay, and uh, ask them to press here more. So the here is what I said. So if it's not sore right here, that means I can have another glass of wine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that means you you're balancing your liver meridian line. <laughs> <laughs> then find the ankle bone on the outside so behind your ankle, ankle bone and under your ankle bone there's the L shape there are a lot of pressure points around here some of you are, might feel pain when you do this and if you don't feel anything that's good and outside of your ankle bone and also inside your ankle bone inside probably you feel more yeah there's a pressure point here so Behind your ankle bone, there's a dent, and you press down. Probably a lot of you guys is painful here. This is your kidney. 
So basically, we just use a ball to massage up and down, so you're getting all these pressure points. And then you move up, right? These areas we don't often get be able to get in yoga. So find your knee bone on the inside. Keep this leg bent. So knee bone in the, on, the, on the inside, underneath it, there's a dent. And this is also a pressure point. You use your thumb to press down, see if you feel any pain. This basically tests if you have a lot of uh, dampness or wetness inside your body. If it's painful, you press down. So from here, your, sh uh, your bone on the inside, this whole line along this bone, you press down and see if you feel any pain here. So this one, you can use a ball. Just to roll it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is your spleen meridian line oh. on the inside. Yeah. What is um, the QL? What's connected to the QL? That's, ki that's your kidney. kidney. Yeah, that's your kidney. I guess I need to give my kidney some more. <laughs> so, so the so the Chinese medicine one thing we talk about uh, kidney spleen is not just one organ; it's a whole system. Yeah. So spleen basically, uh, it's like in charge of like all the food you take in. It's in charge of the digestion to convert this food into energy. The whole system. So. This one you can just roll it like this. Advanced version, you can like lie on that way, sideways, put put on, uh, put the ball on the block. You lie down sideways, and same thing. You just roll it. Yeah. This one you can also do it lie down if you want, but this will be more pain because you add more pressure there. And also this area, also in yoga, you're not able to get this area. Oof. So you can roll it from inside of your knee all the way down. Okay, to your ankle bone here. Especially for people who have knee pains, by losing all sides of their legs, this will help ease their knee pain. Mm -hmm. So would you do the outside of your leg also? The mm -hmm. other? Okay. Oh, we'll do outside. I'm going to show you how to do outside. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm trying. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> yeah. When you come up, just from outside, same thing. You want to find the outside. You probably feel more pain. On um, knee bone on the outside. So you will find this shin bone. So basically, this you need to dig, dig in, and you just use your thumb to feel. Right, so the outside, I'm going to know you can use your hands because some people their hip are not very flexible. This motion is extremely challenging for them. They can do this sit it just to roll it and put pressure there. And the more advanced version would be if you are flexible with your hip, you can actually open this leg out wide and you grab your foot like a hand handle, you just roll it left and right and this add more weight and also if you want more you lean forward this will be more because you add more weight into it outside of your uh, this is your stomach mm. I don't know if you guys want to do like a burps or hiccups mm. <laughs> I I do that every time what co what, why would that be? Like, what causes that? Just the release of uh, the, the energy in the body? Just the, uh, so sometimes the meridian line, the chi gets stuck. Basically, you lose it and move your air around inside of your body. Mm -hmm. And also, this is because it's the stomach meridian line. And that's, uh, normally, it's easier for you to feel the, mm -hmm. the gas moving. So from here all the way down, you can massage out here, okay? Does anybody else have sciatica issues, such that the sides of their legs are numb? 
Before I started practicing good for three oh, years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so I've got really severe sciatica and, and to the degree that this side of my shin is completely numb down to my toe. So doing this is like pins and needles. Oh, wow. Like it doesn't, it's weird because it doesn't hurt, but it's pins and needles numb. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Like it's like, yeah. like it's sharp. the it's numb, side of my yeah, it's yeah. sharp and tingly. There's not so much pain as it is. It's just a weird friction. Interesting. So, nice. so you have sciatic it. nerve issues? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, on both sides. On both sides. Yeah. Oh. No, no, no. I'm not gonna fix it. I'm just telling you guys there's a pressure point. It's on the outside of your glutes. So this is on the gallbladder meridian line. I I forgot to show you guys when we do glutes. So it's more towards outside. Everybody, if you use your thumb to dig in, and. Uh, you will feel something, okay? If you have a hard time to find it, let me know, I'll come and find it. Basically, you just put your ball there and lie on sideways. Ooh, this is gonna be very painful, like you did, like somebody in, did an injection on you. <laughs> this this pressure point helps uh, with the side. The, mm -hmm. You guys feel it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they are on it, they are not able to, like, uh, even not able to breathe. <laughs> it's like, ah, they cannot hold that spot. Okay. Then when you move up, upper. So, quadricep first. Quadricep is also very painful. Quadricep, you can do both balls at the same time. So this one, you're going to do body down. Two balls, you just put it right in front of your knee, but not on top of your knee, uh, not on your kneecap. So you come body down like you do in a sphinx pose. Your, you can interlace your fingers if you can. You're going to tuck your toes under. Even here, some of you probably already feel a lot. You can stay here. Or you can tuck your toes under and just, uh, if you're able to move, just move forward back. <laughs> Ask them to hug their belly in a little, engage their core a little, otherwise too much pressure on the lower back. Can you roll up and down the whole length of the front of the leg? Mm -hmm. Normally I guide them to massage out closer towards their knee first, then they can lower their knee down and move the ball up towards the middle part of their quad, and I will separate three parts. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. And also, if you find it super painful, you can just lie down and you don't need to move. <laughs> 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 just like relax. That's great. Yeah. 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 Front of the quadricep, this is also your stomach here. And you can move up a little more towards top one third. Then you can roll it, or you can stay there. So afterwards, I will do the varijasana because the, you loosed up the quadricep, and then and afterwards the stretch will be much easier. So option one, you just slip on the heel. Option two, ask them to open their heel wide mm -hmm. and slowly sit back. And this will feel very good, okay? Mm -hmm. And whenever you're ready, you can push yourself up and just uh, massage out your quarters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you guys want to do the, it's not, not all easy, it's all painful. <laughs> <laughs> So the so inside of your life, let's do inside first, mm -hmm. adductors, okay? <coughs> adductors, you can do it belly down. Couple ways to do it. And belly down, just a one block. And this time, one side of the knee bend, you're gonna put the ball right closer towards your knee here. So I like to put my block sideways, so this way I have the space to roll forward <coughs> and back. Mm -hmm. So probably some of you, if you just put your ball here and you just put pressure down here, you already feel a lot of pain here. And you can stay here. 
At a bounce option, you lift this foot up, this add more weight, and you just roll it in and out. And you can also draw a circle mm. with this foot. This also you can separate it like you guide them, put it closer towards their knee first. Then you ask them to slowly move their ball in towards the middle part of their inner thigh. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. Oh, that, that's even more tender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Depends on which you know meridian line you have more blockage. Mm -hmm. So this one, inner thigh is the hardest to open because we have three meridian lines here, your liver, spleen, and kidney. That's why when we doing like a, this splits, it's easier, but side splits, if you want to open your legs out wide, this mm -hmm. is really hard to, to do for a lot of us because yeah. any three meridian lines is block, has blockage, it's really hard for you to open your legs out wide. Then you can move it in a little more. Too late for you. <laughs> Do you, do you notice better, if right? anybody ever has their spleen removed, <clears throat> if they're more tight or less tight? And nobody ever tell me that. I'm interested. My dad had his spleen removed yeah. when he was little, so I'd be interested to Pretty see sure. if it locks it up more or if you're just like, Psh, I don't know. Well, I, that, I had that same question when you just said about um, the sciatica connected to the gallbladder. Because yeah. my mother-in-law just had her gallbladder removed like six months ago, and all of a sudden she now has sciatic pain, wow. and she's never had it before. And now I'm like, oh, I gotta go talk to her for this <laughs> class, get her into yin with therapy balls. Yeah. <laughs> so in in Western medicine, you because here they think remove gallbladder is doesn't matter. It's not an important organ, but it's really important. Mm -hmm. Because after you remove your gallbladder, and uh, there's a lot of things mm -hmm. you cannot do, and it just messed up your body so badly. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. see that with the spleen too. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Spleen is also spleen. Yeah, actually, in important. Chinese medicine, is right. the this, um, most important one. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They say that's no problem. Yeah. Take it out. Right. Mm -hmm. The problem is they remove it without identifying what what caused it to become exactly. a yeah. yeah. Or full of stones or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Or sludge. And come up. So the other inner side, I'm going to show you the other way to do it. The other way to do it, you put a block underneath your head. Uh, you change your leg. Uh, and the other block is going to be in front of you. So you lie down sideways. And this, this block, uh, yeah, you lie down sideways like this. And depends on which way you prefer. And uh, actually, I feel like lie down sideways, it's less pressure on the ball, mm -hmm. less tension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably feel better lie down sideways to do this. Yeah, same movement you can do. So I like to put my block this way so you have space yeah, to roll it. And and being still as well, like not having to roll. Yeah, okay. yeah. You don't have to do. You don't have to do the movement all the time. As long as you find it like a sore and tender spot, mm -hmm. you can hold it there too. Yeah. I find it's very interesting because the uh, uh, this class right now, when I teach here, normally I guide movement. I notice the uh, students just uh, if you ask them to stay still. They are not able to. <laughs> yeah, it's actually or more like checking their Apple Watch or something. <laughs> no, they just they just constantly like to move. Yeah. <laughs> then you're gonna move it up a little. Then you're gonna move it in a little more. Yeah, it's your inner thigh. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you so much for doing it. Okay, now you 
when you slowly press yourself up. Okay, so normally after the inner thigh, I would ask them to bring their soles of feet together and just to use your palm to massage it out. Normally ask them to do this like we just do one side and they will notice one side of the knee in the posture, they will notice that one side of the knee is way lower than the other side. And uh, if you, after you do both sides, you can ask them to do a, uh, mm. yeah. And this pose is, will help them to stretch out the inner thigh what do we just work down, okay? Now we are going to move to uh, outer side of our leg. Okay. So uh, let's find that spot again. So not everybody did that. The outside of a leg, uh, we start with our uh, pressure point uh, on the very outside of your glutes. It's like on uh, more towards the outer edge. You use your sign to dig in, and you will feel the pain. Okay, and this is where the ball is going to hit. Then you lie down sideways. Okay, now from here, your back, uh, top leg is bending, you just step it behind your bottom leg. So, Bottom forearm, you're going to push down, and if you can, you're going to lift your glutes up. You start to roll it, just a very little. It's very painful. Outside of a leg, I think this outside of a leg is our gallbladder meridian line. My opinion, this is the most painful one. Okay? And from here, after you release this, you can ask them to move their ball on the outside of the leg. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> This is the most painful one. And you can roll it all the way down towards outside of the leg. Does it do a whole of yoga? Yeah, just moaning and groaning. <laughs> yeah. Over balls. <laughs> if it's too painful, you can just find there and then stop find stillness and just sit down. And also this requires some shoulder stress too. And also, when you work on gallbladder meridian line, this immediately makes you sweat. Yeah, I'm sorry. Notice that? <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Because this is our, uh, basically, this meridian line gives us energy. Oh. That's why when we work on it, uh, you immediately start to feel the reaction of your body. Mm -hmm. But uh, versus in the thigh, this is, this is in meridian line, bring your energy down. Even it's very painful, but you guys don't feel the same kind of reaction. Vulnerable, strong, and powerful. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that a lot of the lower body work involves holding yourself up with your arms. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense to teach from the bottom. Mm -hmm. From bottom up to mom, the side, the after. Yeah. 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 Okay. Then you can. Push yourself up and you can massage it all the way down to the outside of the knee. And normally, after you push up, I ask them to make a fist with the hand and just to massage it out. And after you get the legs, when they get up, they will walk, they will feel their legs are very light and just feels good. Also, good for the pelvis too to loose up all side of the legs. Okay, then we are going to keep so for our front of our body, so as. Three trigger points in psoas. The first one would be you will find your pubic bone and draw a straight line. So this is the first trigger point on your psoas. Not everybody will feel all three trigger points on psoas, okay? And you're going to lie down on your belly for this one. One on each side, two both. Should it be at your hips? So front, still front of your leg is not on your hip. So it's a little bit lower. Find your pubic bone, draw a straight line. Right here, yeah. And <laughs> if on, you, on the top of the leg, are we at the top of here or just inside towards the inner thigh? Oh, you'll find it across the top. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> But if you don't have psoas issues, you will not feel anything. Uh, this trigger point, not everybody will feel it. Uh, I, I feel, always feel it up higher. Mm -hmm. yeah. Underneath my intestines. Three trigger points on your psoas. This is the first one. The second one is you're going to find your hip bone and inside of your hip bone. This is the second trigger point. And you use two balls and you put it right underneath here. Also belly down. So this one, sometimes, you can do both balls at the same time. Sometimes I like to do it this way. So you find your, oh, just the one ball on one side. You find your sphinx pose. Then opposite side of the knee is bent. Now from here, tuck your toe under, whatever has a ball under, you tuck your toe under, lift your knee up, you can start to roll it forward and back a little. So as a lot of times you don't feel like it's an issue, but when you press on the ball, you notice it's very painful. Yeah, it's just time. inside the hip bone. Yeah, you're not pressed down on the hip bone. This is the second trigger point. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes I would ask them to add their inner thigh while they are holding this posture. So the other ball will be here. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take a picture or video of us doing training? <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. <sighs> okay, so this is the second trigger point for the psoas. Okay, and uh, the third trigger point for the psoas is you need to find your hip bone and find your belly button. So this is a diagonal line, 45 degree angle, right in the middle. Okay, this is third trigger point. This one also belly down, two balls, one on each side. Oh. <laughs> my psoas is very, it's very angry. I just cannot release my psoas. <sighs> So basically you can stay in Sphinx pose, you can just rock it left and right. You can also tuck your toe under. Ooh, try to roll the ball forward and back a little. So all three trigger points depends on which way you feel the most. So find your hip bone and your belly button. Yeah. Draw a diagonal line and right in the middle. Yeah, that's a good And so as normally, a uh, compare posture is uh, before you get into it, you ask them to do a forward fold, seated forward fold. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, you ask them to do a seated forward fold and they will feel the difference and they will gain flexibility by releasing so as. Mm -hmm. I would not have been able to do this here, so. so wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, it's amazing, there's like no pain anymore. And you remove your ball out to the side and just massage it out. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Yeah, it's a good sleeping thing with my sleep. Mm -hmm. More upper body at the front, packs. Packs, we did see it, right? Normally, at the beginning, I ask them to do that so they feel it, they know where to press on. So this one also need to do belly down. So your block are going to be, uh, put your ball on top of block. Your pecs, you're going to put your ball on top of the pecs and the other hand bend, your forehead relax down. And basically this elbow bend, you just move it up and down. Slowly. like a 45 degree angle, this will be more easier to access. Yeah. Lucy, we break, we break down while we have it in the shop. Oh, mm -hmm. no, it's just a little bit in front here. A little bit in front, so like the whole community. Mm -hmm. So we're blowing in the pack. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can also, all these things we do
do, you can find stillness, you can add movement. And this arm should be... This arm bent, you can just gently move it up and down. You can also keep this arm straight and move it up and down, it feels so different. Feels different. And also, uh, we need class coverages Monday and Wednesday evening. Right? Oh, okay. If you're yeah. ready for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought we had somebody. So, again, I, there have been so many needs for subs that I'm starting to lose my mind. Lucy is going to be gone um, for six weeks. And we have coverage. Lynn and Amy are covering her yin classes on Tuesday and Thursday at 4 30, is when it's going to be. Um, but we need Monday, well, we need Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, 7.15. 7, 7 p.m. 7, 7, yes, 7, 7, 7 p.m. It's in the East Room, maximum 12 people. We need somebody to teach that class. And then if we put Monday on the schedule, it would be, that would be their class, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not going to teach it. Mm -hmm. Lucy is addicted to Barney and Barney's <laughs> coming back. Mm -hmm. So she does not want to teach while Barney is teaching, but people love the class. So if you're yeah. looking to add a class, you want a yin at seven o'clock in, mm -hmm. in that room on Monday nights, it would be yours. A yin with therapy balls. Mm -hmm. Are all of them with balls or just the Monday? Just the night, just the Monday, Wednesday. Oh. Monday and Wednesday. If you are Wednesday. confident and mm -hmm. want to add, I mean, it's not on there, but you could always add it as an option since you're subbing the yeah. Because Monday and Wednesday right now, that those two classes are doing really well. So it's Very already well. established class. Yeah. yeah. I have known average, I think, 12 plus. Monday yeah. now it's like 19, 20, 22. So it's in this room. Yeah. yeah. But it, it won't be in this room yeah. as of September because Barney will be in here. Yeah. So, so we definitely we need subs and that's something I dropped the ball on. <laughs> we need subs in a week for that. So let me speak up if you want it. Yours. So this one, then yeah. afterwards, uh, the stretching would be shoulder opening. So you keep the ball right underneath here, where it is, remove the block out to the side. One stretching is your arm is straight and your right hand in front of your chest. I don't know the English name for this posture. <laughs> Do you have an English name for this one? Yeah. I know how to get I people there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same. I don't have to the name. The name. No. Yeah. I only yeah. know the Sanskrit name for this one. What is the Sanskrit name? Svastigasana 1. It's from Universal Yoga. It's a translation. Svastigasana 1. Svastigasana 1. Mm -hmm. This is Svastigasana 1. And this is Svastigasana 2. Or better yet, I'll, yeah. I'll test you when you find it. Oh. So this is uh, this arm straight, and uh, oh, a lot of times I ask my client to put a block underneath their ear because sometimes one side of the neck is shorter than the other. Block underneath their ear is better for them. And you, so this posture first step their top foot behind them. If they are able to, oh, I'm sorry. First option is here, if their shoulder is super tight. Second option here. Then if you're able to get here, you want their hip in line with their shoulder because a lot of times their hips are here, mm -hmm. right? If you move your hip forward in line with the shoulder and they will feel more um, stretch uh, sensation. Then this is option two. Option three will be both knee up. Option four will be top on back, interlace and bind your hand. Mm -hmm. This is option two. This is four option of the uh, four expression of the pose. Okay, and uh, whenever you're ready, you're gonna slowly come back. And also this arm position level with your shoulder. Advanced version will be higher than the shoulder. Okay, if your shoulder is super open. Then Svastigasana 2 is bent elbow. This is more advanced mm -hmm. pack stretch. You still keep the ball here. Uh, this one, me personally, I don't like the block underneath me. You lie down sideways. This is option one. Option two will be use your hand, grab your top foot and step in front of your knee here. Option three will be use your hand and push this knee out. Is the block still in front of our left shoulder? 
The ball is still in front of your left shoulder. Mm -hmm. The ball is still there. All these stretches come from universal yoga. And they are, they are crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if you have never watched the universal yoga, what they're doing is like here, so you will be able to put their hand behind you, behind their head and grab the other hand. Mm -hmm. So I have a book in, I have, I'm pretty sure I have their book. It's like 2000 and something asanas. And it, I mean this book, it's that thick and it's got uh, so many different postures. Nice. It's a little ridiculous. Yeah. But I'll bring that in and leave it here so you guys can all peek at it and see. So they say there's as many yoga postures as there are species on earth. <laughs> as there should be. So this is for the packs, okay, two stretches for the packs afterwards. And then we move to right behind the packs is our rotator cuff. Uh, our, this is also very painful. So basically you find the back of your shoulder and there's a dent. The other, another way to describe it is right behind your packs. You and feel it, you find it. <laughs> This one you lie down on your back, but you want this arm extended out straight and put your ball right underneath the stand and you're going to slowly lie down sideways. Some of you will not be able to lie down sideways. You will feel it if you're in the right spot. So eventually we want you to lie down completely sideways. Here. Yeah, if anybody needs help to find this spot, let me know. This is a this is the spot a lot of students have a hard time to find, and uh, I will come around and help them. So if you're able to move, you're going to bend this elbow in and extend it out. Just initially when you lie on sideways, you'll feel it a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do external rotation and internal rotation on this arm. Mm -hmm. So you ask to rotate it up to do what you want. Yeah. 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 You can also ask them to lift their arm up straight and start to draw a circle with this arm, but it's just a, it's getting more and more intense here. So this this uh, spot feels really good um, for people who have shoulder and neck issues. So you guys feel it when we move up to upper body and it's more calming and you guys want to sleep, right? That's mm -hmm. why it's good to sequence the class this way and mm -hmm. get them ready to the Shavasana. Oh, sometimes in this one, I also add in the thigh. So you just uh, grab another block and put a block on the, uh, put the ball on top of the block. So one falls you underneath your shoulder, the other ball yeah. for the inner thigh. So you can do both at the same time. <laughs> I'm too tired. <laughs> Are you tired? I'm tired of today. Oh. Did anybody else teach this morning? Jad? Bridget, did you teach? No, I taught this morning. You did? Okay. And then you taught the class. Whenever you're ready, you can push yourself. Okay. And just massage it out. And you will notice the difference. Normally, I ask my students just draw a circle with their shoulder. They will notice the difference between one shoulder and the other. So the one we worked on, you will feel much more range of motion versus the other side. Okay. And now we move up to our deltoid. Right here. So if you extend one arm up, you 
um this outside yeah right here you feel this big lump of muscle here this is your deltoid so this one just a one ball you're going to lie down sideways <laughs> so keep this arm next to your torso if you need a block and then you still have to do so This is also another painful muscle we don't pay attention to. How do you guys feel it? Mm -hmm. So you basically want to keep this arm next to your torso here. Yeah. And the movement will be you just do lean forward and lean back. Especially you do a lot of chaturangas. <laughs> Roll it up and down two and forward and back. experiences after. Mm -hmm. I felt really great and loose the next day. She was actually quite sore and I was wondering what kind of feedback that I could give a student that might have had that experience. So especially if they are first time doing that, next day they will feel sore. That's completely normal. Okay. Yeah, if they never done this kind of work before, it will be very sore for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can mention that in the class too okay. for the new waking up. Mm -hmm. muscles and nerve endings and things of that yes. sort is that yes correct because you never you worked your body that way so you guys if your first time doing this kind of work and you will feel very sore tomorrow okay mm -hmm. that's different kind of so just drink a lot of water otherwise and to drink a lot of water and mm -hmm. keep moving the next day okay, yeah thank you. and then we have the front of a dale toy so this will be here so you want to put your ball right here and you're going to lie down on your belly here and the other hand is going to be just a slow movement in and out here. This is for the front of your deltoid because our deltoid has anterior, uh, medium, and posterior. Find a block and uh, in a seated position. And the other way to loose up your arms is uh, find a comfortable seated position. You can just use one ball. Uh, one side of your palm facing down. Sometimes you can also do this at the beginning of the class after you massage it out here. And just use one ball to hit from top of your shoulder. Yeah, inside of your arm. A lot of painful spot here as you hit. Then your inside of your elbow crest and come down to your forearm, around your wrist. A lot of time, a lot of people's wrists are very sensitive. You can ask them to roll it. And your forearm, especially this meaty part of your forearm here. Is this like a cool down at the end of class? A power, I would do it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Uh, like a beginning after they roll here, mm -hmm. here, here, and uh, you ask them to start to 
hit the arm and the palm facing up first, then palm facing down and start the back of the wrist. They can draw circles and come up. And around the wrist area, especially for people who have some um, uh, the cover tunnel, yes, and wrist issues, they will feel a lot. And people have tennis elbows, they will feel a lot around their elbow area. This helps relieve the <clears throat> shoulder and neck tension. And after you do that, you just ask them to relax their arm down. They will immediately feel this side of the shoulder and neck released versus the other side. So this is also a way to release the shoulder and neck. And uh, also massage your hand. You're going to, uh, <laughs> this is an easy version. This is more advanced version if you want to add hip opening. So basically you just roll the ball in your hand. You can also roll to each one of your fingertips. Yeah. As you're doing this, actually, you're doing a forward fold. You're also doing hip opening, too. A lot of our students, you notice in down dog, they are not able to open their <coughs> fingertips out wide. Yeah. So this actually helps them to uh, release the fascia on their hand and it will help them to open their fingertips out wide in down dog. And uh, the other way to release the forearm would be um, you can ask them to put the one forearm down on the mat. The other forearm basically just uh, you can just uh, massage it out left and right. And also if you turn your thumb up, this probably will be more for the, yeah, I like you put a block in there. <laughs> Great, yes. Because a lot of our students were not able to have this kind of flexibility. Hmm. Then towards the end of the class, there's a couple way to end it. End of the class. I already show you guys to massage out the back of the neck. There's another way to end your class is to massage out your facial muscles. So I like to do this, sit on top of the block, two balls in your hand. So you start with corner of your mouth and you massage like a V shape. You massage it out to the front of your ear. You just ask them to ro uh, remove your glasses. Yeah. And also, at the front of your ear, there's a dent. You just massage it up and down here. Then you come to your temple. At the temple, you can massage into your hairline. And these are very painful, especially if for people who have headaches more happening on their side. This is also the area to help relieve the headaches. Then you come to the eyebrow. You can massage out your eyebrow too. If two balls is too much, you can just do one ball. Then come to the middle of your, in between your eyebrow, brows, your third eye center. And the other side. You can also massage out your forehead. And notice how you feel, right? It immediately helps you to calm down and relax and feel even feel a little bit sleepy, massage this area. So this is perfect to end the class. And this is one way to end the class. The other way to end the class is, um, so you're going to lower your right ear down towards your right shoulder. So from the back of your ear and use the ball to massage the side of your neck. Just notice where you feel a lot of tension here, right? This one you can also light, uh, do it lie down. 
you need one block and you want to lie down sideways put the ball right behind your ear here and you start to massage it out you can roll your head side to side normally if i ask them to end the class i would ask them to lie down sideways and massage it out here first then i'm going to remove the block and calm down they can lie down the side to massage up the temple like we just did seated but with more weight it will be more intense then i'm going to ask them to back down and massage up their forehead and eyebrows then we're going to switch sides then come into shavasana this way this is another way to end the class So pretty much every class I um, ended either this, if I only have single ball, I will end the class like this. If I have a peanut ball, I'll end the class massage on the base of the skull there. Okay? Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you. These are awesome.